Hello, good day. Welcome back to Coding with Verl. And today we're going to implement the sign in logic for our sign in form. If you recall, in the previous video, we simply had a function that was called do login, which was called um, when you click the sign in button. But all that did was store a value. Like it called something called store value. It gave it a key of like user email and it gave it like a fake email. But no, that was just a placeholder. We want to implement the full logic for this function so that it actually call pocket base, do the sign in with the username, email and password that the user is going to type in the form and get back from pocket base the JWT and other information that we're going to then store. And if we can't sign in, we want to be able to show an error message. So at the end of this video, you're going to be able to accomplish just what you saw. So let's jump in. Let's start from where we left off. And that's going to be in our do login function. And we're going to go to the documentation for AppSmith. And if you look at this thing that says fetch API, it shows you that you can use it to make RESTful call, whether it's post, put, you know, um, get, that sort of thing. However, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to instead go to Mozilla and look for the fetch API documentation. And if you read that, it's going to tell you that oh, when you use the fetch API, it's a promise base function. It replaced the previous way of doing RESTful call. And so you might be wondering what's a promise. Well, a promise is something that to be fulfilled later. Specifically in JavaScript, a promise could be fulfilled or rejected. The thing about a from promise, instead of having a bunch of callbacks, like the old RESTful API, you can just get a this thing called a promise, which is an object, and then you can either use callback to wait on if it's fulfilled or it's rejected, or you can use the await um, keyword to say, when this is finished, let me know or take this action. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to use this approach. Now, I think this function is a lot cleaner than the one that's shown in AppSmith. So I'm going to paste it here as reference for us so we can sort of pattern our implementation similar to this. Now, why does that do I why do I like this one so much? Well, I'm not a fan of deeply nested code. And this implementation is sort of along the line of how I write code. So the first thing we want to do is get a URL where we're going to be able to make our RESTful endpoint call. So we can find this by going back to the pocket base documentation and look at how we authenticate and we can see that we authenticate against a collection using the auth with password. And in this case, the collection is our user's collection. So we type that in. So now we have our endpoint where we're going to call. The next thing we want to do is to be able to do a try catch. Now, if you're not familiar with try catch type of coding, this is not the place to learn it. So you just have to just do what I do. Uh, but basically it's exception handling. And so we're going to call the fetch function, give it our API base and request option. Now why request option? Request option is basically the detail about our request. So now I'm just going to say that's a JavaScript object. And we're going to use a way to the response from fetch. Now there's some details about fetch that I'm not going to spend the time here to explain, but you should definitely check out the documentation. It tells you why a wait returns a response that's a promise and then later on a second promise. And I also found a really nice YouTube video that I'm going to link to in the description that you should check out it. If you don't want to spend the time reading, you can check out the video. 
that guy does a really good job. And based on what is really happening is that the fetch function returns a promise and that promise gets resolved or fulfilled as soon as the API it's calling returns the header. So when you make a REST uh, request, uh, HTTP request, two things happen. It returns the headers and then the body. And so the fetch function is being clever and saying, oh, soon as I get back the headers, I can tell you whether this call was resolved correctly or not, because in the header, we're going to get, you know, HTTP status okay or whatever. And later on, the body could take a long time to come in. So I can resolve that later. So then hence the two, why the two promises. But again, watch that video and it's going to tell you. Now, because we're doing try catch block, we want to catch error. So basically what I've done is I said, look, if the response is okay, or if his response is not okay, we're going to throw an error. And this is basically, I'm going to throw a new exception with the error message, unable to log in and include the response status code in there. This will be used later on for login. However, on line 17, if the response was okay, now we can try to get resolve the response body essentially as JSON. And that means this is a promise, so we can await it. And by awaiting this, when it's resolved, where we can then um, extract the body and print it out. Well, at this point, we can't really run this code. Um, that's because we didn't pass a request option. Remember I said it was an empty object. And by default, fetch is just going to do a get. We don't want to do a get. We actually want to do a post. So the way to do this is to actually construct and configure the request option to say the method that we want to actually use is a post. The headers is content type that JSON, which basically tell the API what type of how the data sent. And we also want to specify the request body. Now, like I said, I don't like deeply nested code. So I'd rather create a few extra variables if I can keep my code from nesting too much, even if it might be a little bit longer, um, a few more lines, because I find that this is much easier to read. Okay. So now that we have pretty much um, written everything we need to, we can review our code and then we can try running it. And so you can just click the run button and you can see that, oh, well, it failed here. Well, the reason it failed is because the content type here, I said application JSON, I, I misspell application. So once I fix this, uh, clean up and then rerun, you'll see it runs successfully, no error message. And we can see from the output that we have this response body. And basically the function run, ran successfully, but we didn't return any value. That's why we don't have anything. But the response body is exactly from line 30, where we say log response body, and then the body. And the body here is a JSON value that we can see has token, which is the JWT token. And it has this field called record. And if we expand record, we see the email and username. So we can store these things. So let's create some constants. Now we're going to use constants because we're not going to modify these values. So just let's call them constants. Now, in terms of storing, this store value function is something that's provided by AppSmith. And it basically tells us in the description there that it is used to store a value to local store in the browser. And of course, we can retrieve it anywhere in our AppSmith application using AppSmith.store. But let's ignore that for now. We just want to be able to store things in there. So if we run our function again, we'll see it. Uh, we have a response 200, which tells us this is good. Now, why did I change this to log in the status code instead of the JWT and so on like before? Well, from a security point of view, you do not want your log messages to contain things like JWT, um, user's password, and that sort of thing. So I can go to my browser and check for this, um, this local store. 
And so if you navigate to the developer um, section for your web browser by going into the settings, developer options, now I'm using Brave. So this is gonna be similar to Chrome, but almost all browsers are gonna have like a developer option in the settings. And if you navigate to the local store, again, this is Brave, so um, in Firefox it might be different, in Safari it might be different, call different, but you should be able to find the local browser store, you will see those um, key value stored there. And it looks like AppSmith um, has a key called Auth Token that they probably make good use of when um, talking to a backend and automatically sends it. So why don't we just change our storage of the token to be placed in our token instead of just JWT. Now, since we can read this out later on, we can force it to be whatever we want, but hey, if ASMIT is gonna automatically submit a um, request header, including the JWT, why not use it? So let's do that. The only thing I want to do now is to handle the case of when we fail to log in. So let's say um, our login fail. It'd be nice to show the user error message. And so for that, I'm going to pretend that we have a failure here. And you can see I have this error message that shows up in red. Well, how did I do that? Well, all I did was added a you know text field to my form and I said the text to be I remove the text so it's empty and therefore it doesn't show anything and then of course I set the color to red that's all so I didn't show you that because now you know how to add elements to a form when you see me do that you don't need to see me doing it because you know you can imagine how I've got it done because we've now covered O2 um, thing elements all right, so I think that's enough um, for this video. I know it's kind of short, but that's how I want to keep it. I don't want to spend too much time uh, making the videos too long. So if you have questions or comment, please leave them below. If you find this video um, helpful, please give us a thumbs up um, or leave some comment. Um, if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much, appreciate it. If you're new to the channel and you find this video helpful, please consider subscribing. We'd love to have you. And click the check the notification bell so that you'll be notified when I post videos. Until next video, stay safe and see you. Bye.